Hello, I'm Dr. Tanja Dudenbostel, a clinical hypertension specialist and faculty member of the hypertension program in Division of Cardiovascular Disease at the University of Alabama at Birmingham School of Medicine. I am delighted to share with you today current treatment options for treatment-resistant hypertension. Our data show that hypertension affects over 1 billion people worldwide. It's a major risk for cardiovascular disease. One third of the US adult population has high blood pressure, and only one third of these are controlled. High blood pressure is the most common risk factor for stroke and heart failure. Studies have shown that by controlling blood pressure, we can reduce heart attacks by 25%, strokes by 35%, and heart failure rates even by 50%. Treatment-resistant hypertension was previously considered rare. Unfortunately, its prevalence doubled over the last 20 years. It has been shown that patients with treatment-resistant hypertension who follow a low-sodium diet, a high-fiber, low-fat diet, and who are physically active can reduce blood pressure by at least 20 to 30 points. Regarding drug treatment, a combination therapy of different antihypertensive classes is recommended. Clothalidone is shown to be the preferred diuretic. It effectively reduces blood pressure and more importantly, the risk for stroke and other cardiovascular endpoints. Aldosterone antagonists have been shown to be effective in patients with resistant hypertension. And this is important independent of aldosterone levels. It reduces blood pressure and left ventricular hypertrophy. Additionally, it improves the mortality rate by 30% in patients with heart failure. Since patients with resistant hypertension are at greatly increased cardiovascular risk, they are in urgent need of novel approaches for blood pressure lowering. There are parotid sinus stimulation devices that have been shown to effectively lower blood pressure in some patients. For example, the Rios device showed in preliminary studies a mean systolic blood pressure reduction of 30 points. Another promising therapy is bilateral renal sympathetic denervation by a catheter that delivers RF energy to disrupt efferent and efferent sympathetic nerves in the adventitia of renal arteries. Data from the Simplicity Hypertension 1 study demonstrate that with this safe and easily performed technique, office blood pressure was reduced by an average of 27 over 14 points at one year post-procedure. And office blood pressure reductions persisted 24 months after the procedure. Similarly, the Simplicity Hypertension 2 trial showed a decline in office blood pressures through 24 months. One of the interesting scientific findings using renal sympathetic denervation is that there are a lot of target effects like improvement of glucose metabolism. Another finding is an improved diastolic function on echocardiography in patients treated with renal denervation. These are fascinating observations that need to be further evaluated. Thanks for watching about current treatment options for resistant hypertension.